Oh my. Oh my. That carpet's from The Shining. If you don't know, The Shining is an iconic 1980s horror film directed by Stanley Kubrick, and it has this carpet in it. The carpet is a visual metaphor of the Overlook Hotel, in which there's hexagon shapes and the outer level is holding the evil within. This is gonna make a lot more sense later as we dive into the story behind this video. Hi, my name is Jordan Orm. I'm a professional music video editor for artists like these guys. Huge thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this episode. So whatever these uh, heart plushies are, they're being portrayed as very bad, very invasive. So let's see what happens. That right there is the inciting incident. In storytelling, there's something called an inciting incident in which a character experiences something that is out of their control that sets them on this journey. Essentially, this heart plushy possesses our boy. He now is feeling so much love. Ooh, we got some heart love mazes, which is also a callback to The Shining, and we'll talk about that later. But we enter graphic novel mode, and this is the moment in which our character is changed forever. All those visual effects are saying, bro, something crazy just happened. Oh. There's so many callbacks to The Shining. This is crazy. So it looks like something has broken into the room. Kind of like our boy saying, Here's Johnny. And these flashy edits are really cool right here. It seems like they wanted to combine two different takes that they liked, but they didn't know how to do it. So what did they do? They started on one take, cut to black, introduced the new take, cut to black again, and created just some flutter cuts to blend the two takes together. Oh, even the question marks look like hearts. We also definitely have some cuts between these whip pans. Very cool. And it looks like there should have been a whip pan right here, but it looks like they maybe didn't have the footage or something didn't work out on set. So they just use a sideways directional blur to help blend the two shots together. So that was a nice save by the editor. I think he said, can I be a boyfriend a little bit too early? And the chicken had to let him know that <laughs> you don't say that, dude. <laughs> oh my gosh, they are rioting in the hotel room. This story's getting really crazy. Right when our boy was invaded with that love, the boys started freaking out. They don't know what to do. They're saying stupid things like, can I be your boyfriend? Everything is falling apart. So now enters the antagonist of the story. Oh, that was a nice little transition. I like that. Outside of the Overlook Hotel in The Shining, there's this giant maze and there's a crazy end scene of the movie, but we're also seeing mazes inside of the heart. And between the maze and the carpet, it creates an interesting metaphor. Once you are invaded with emotions of love, like a maze, navigating that love can become very difficult. So let's see how they navigate it. Oh, this is crazy. I love this. Oh. The boys get invaded with love. They freak out. They call the police. The police come to shut down this giant emotion. But what happens is instead of shooting it and taking it out, the emotion just captures the bullet. No big deal. The emotion that they're feeling is so great that it cannot be taken down. This is so... That is, re that really got me, bro. Out of nowhere, bro. Literally me reacting to Stray Kids. <laughs> All the camera repositioning is so good. I talk about this in some of my older episodes, but using a cutout transition is super clean. Anybody can do it. It just involves you rotoscoping the subject of the next shot and then animating in the background. And now this is our actual shot. And then we do the reverse effect to animate out. So we just switch out the background keep the main subject in and then let the subject exit the scene. A lovely cutout transition. <laughs> Frick. 
I can't with those. <laughs> oh, I mean. I may be the only one that didn't know this, but uh, 143 is actually texting code for I love you because the numbers correspond to the amount of letters in each of the words. I didn't know that. But if you disregard that the numbers are code, it also seems like this is a case that the police deal with often. Ooh. It's almost like we're inside the mind of a boy who has found a love interest and one side of them is you know the happy fun loving side where they're like oh I just want to be in love and then there's another side of them which is the police and they're like bad idea bro we we should not get in love any of these emotions that we're feeling not good we gotta shut them down we've been hurt in the past and both the video and the music illustrate this so well we have this fun section where they're just so excited to be in love and then guess what happens Ooh! bro the way that the editor matched those headlight flares to the ad libs the police are like we're gonna shut this down bro but we're having some trouble Yo, I hear editors say this all the time. They say, Jordan, I want to get better at editing, but I have no footage. There's footage out there that exists for you to start playing with right now. It's called stock footage. And the best stock footage site out there is Storyblocks. Storyblocks has over a million high quality assets for personal and commercial use, but what puts them ahead of their competition is their integration right into Premiere Pro. The Storyblocks plugin for Adobe Premiere Pro helps video creators and editors make videos faster by allowing them to search, download, and try out different content from their library directly within Premiere Pro. So the plugin minimizes distractions and it enables you to do what you do best create. So let's do it guys. Choose the plan that works for you at storyblocks.com slash orm and start editing today. Yo, the little plushies, they represent emotions. Bro, the police are no match for all the emotions. The plushies that just overtook them and they have no idea what to do. Ooh, a split screen? He just, he just, he just jumped from the, the top screen to, to the bottom, to the bottom screen. That's impressive. How did they do this? I assume that they did this by shooting three shots on the bottom. They shot a plate, which is just the background, no dancers. And then they shot another shot with just the dancers without our main boy here. Then they shot a third one with just our main boy dancing, except we have him jump off of something or maybe just jump from the ground. And then you're able to rotoscope him out and animate him from the top to the bottom. It's just a genius way to make a split screen not boring. And it serves the story because the police are trying to chase them and that's his way of getting away, <laughs> literally just transporting scenes. Oh my gosh, bro. <laughs> the police are just trying to figure out these emotions. They're like, bro, what is this we're feeling? Love? Adoration? How do we deal with this? And this transition is kind of another version of the cutout transition where we show the subject of the next shot, except we have them blurred. And then as we take off the blur, we fade in the background and it looks really good. I mean, you could just mash cut it. You could have just cut it. But it kind of, it's a little smoother that way, so it looks fun. Oh, frick, they're trying to figure the emotions out. They're so in love. Bro, we're just going back and forth. 
<laughs> this is crazy. Stray Kids is teaching us something so good about storytelling here, guys. They're teaching us about conflict. The basics of storytelling is a character going through obstacles to achieve a goal. And the obstacles are where the meat of the story is. In order to have obstacles, you need to have conflict. In order to have conflict, lots of times you need a protagonist and an antagonist. So our protagonists are the boys that are so in love. They just want to be in love and they want to achieve the goal of their love interest. And then the antagonists are the police, which are like, guys, we can't do this. This is bad. We've been hurt before. We need to stop you from getting to your goal. And it's so hard for songs to have personified conflict. And that's why music videos oftentimes fall flat and they're not memorable. But this one has such a good story built right into the song that the music video just follows suit. <laughs> oh frick. The conflict has gotten to such a climax that the brain is falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's crazy. That's a plot twist I did not see coming. The way he just walks in. But wait, this is such a genius storytelling technique. So as the boys and the police are going head to head, the conflict gets bigger and bigger until it reaches this point where they unplug and the brain goes berserk. But then they use this tactic of pausing and rewinding to say, hey, what if we went back in history and changed the past? Let's see what happens, baby. Oh, bro, they got different outfits on. Yes, bro. This is crazy. So this pausing wasn't just a fun plot twist for retention, it actually had a storytelling purpose. Instead of this conflict getting to a place where they have analysis paralysis, they went back in time and they said, you know what, forget it. I'm just gonna go for it. Yo, they plugged back in, put on some leather jackets, and they're like, bruh, we're going after this love interest. Oh my God. Oh my god. So what Here's the problem with using a user interface like YouTube. When we watch this again next year, the YouTube interface isn't gonna look like this and it's gonna be extremely dated. But I realized it was just for the joke. It wasn't the whole point of the story. So it's fine. But it's like they were having this internal conflict in their brain and then they finally break through it and they decide, you know what? We're gonna go into reality. We're gonna get outside of our heads and we're gonna pursue this love interest. And here they are in the black void of reality. 